So I have come to the uh, real end of this uh, great odyssey into uh, the exploration of uh, unified meditation. It's going to be a very short chapter compared to uh, the earlier ones. I don't have much left to say and um, I do not want to uh, blabber and uh, talk gibberish. Whatever I wrote in my earlier pages were objectively chosen words, not some ranting of a self-obsessed human being. I am sure that uh, you have uh, understood it that way by now. As I'm about to finish this book in the few minutes ahead, I feel a kind of um, sadness because this routine that I had for the last uh, 64 days will be uh, over. It was such a challenge to write this book. Every part of me worked hard and um, I don't know from where I um, got all this information, but I got it. When I am telling where, I mean where in my uh, consciousness, not uh, in the internet or some libraries or some network connections of people. Since a few weeks, uh, I've been thinking about my next book because uh, I will be bored otherwise and uh, my time will be wasted and I do not want that. Still, I will miss writing this book and um, the joy I had in the process of uh, speaking or writing this book. But everything has got to come an end and so has this book come to an end. I told you earlier about being a spiritual billionaire. Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos are the people that come in our minds when we say billionaire. They bring in our minds the image of uh, a powerful person who has uh, tons of uh, money and assets. As a result, they can um, command world leaders and they can uh, change the direction of um, the economy. Amazon has changed the way we shop. Facebook has changed the way we stay in contact with friends. Google has changed the way we get information. Elon Musk radicalized many fundamental concepts like building rockets can be privatized and electric cars can become cool. Bill Gates has made everybody's life easier with his uh, Windows system. In addition to that, he brought the concept of the pledge whereby um, all the billionaires would donate a significant portion of their wealth for charity before they die. Even before these modern billionaires, earlier generations of billionaires also shaped our lives like um, Henry Ford made horses obsolete and made cars a basic necessity. The list is very long and um, it's not my objective to glorify them, but uh, just to use them as uh, a stepping stone to explain why I call myself a spiritual billionaire. You might not know it as you read the words that I'm speaking now, but um, I and uh, my writings especially will shift the consciousness of humanity in the coming um, decades and centuries. That is the prophecy at least. Will I be able to uh, be a witness of what I have just claimed? I do not know. Would you be convinced or would you die calling me a big mouth charlatan? I do not know. What I do know is that um, I can't deny this um, inner light in me that is showing me in that direction and the evidences that I get every time I um, open my eyes in the morning and interact with people and produce 
this kind of uh, books. I just can't deny the prophecy that I've been hearing since my childhood when I was 17. I was told it's not gonna be a fast journey and certainly me standing at 50 doesn't seem fast at all. However, the way my intelligence and my mind has grown and uh, the philosophies that I'm able to build just point out to the direction that uh, Yes, I am that chosen one. Although I am a reluctant chosen one, but that wouldn't matter for the universe. Exactly what kind of change I'm gonna bring? I've talked about uh, the philosophy of that uh, change in my two books, The Unified Theory of uh, Motivation and Living, part one and part two. So I don't want to uh, bore you too much except that it is about um, changing the world from a consumer-based society to a spiritual-based society. It sounds um, quite big, but um, the indicators that the world is going in a direction are already there. However, it's beyond the scope of this book to talk about those evidences and uh, how my books will play a pivotal role in that. Also, I am a spiritual billionaire because uh, I have uh, so much at my disposal in the spiritual world in terms of bliss, information, and um, impact that um, is um, a millions of times more than the, the average person has. Many of you must have felt me as you read through those pages. Others, if you have read this far, will be able to sense my spiritual wealth when you meditate in the way I prescribe. There is nothing I cannot have in the spiritual world. And there are small traces of uh, objects that must uh, be linked to the spiritual world in the actual physical world. For that, I have enough uh, material wealth to acquire. I know it's a bit complex concept of uh, being a billionaire that uh, I have uh, discussed in the earlier subsection. However, I am not apologetic because this book is not a book on uh, philosophy like uh, my earlier two books. This is a how-to book on uh, unified meditation and this is just the conclusion. That said, if you follow my path, you too can become a spiritual billionaire in the same framework that I explained earlier. It means that you too would have a great power to influence the course of uh, human civilization and uh, you too can have access to uh, infinite bliss and information as well as um, impact in the spiritual world. I will just give you a hint of the evidences uh, that uh, point towards the shift in consciousness that is impending and uh, how I will rise to power in the consciousness of millions of people. Currently, the world, because of the um, above billionaires and other capitalists, is um, founded on consumerism. However, the same consumerism has uh, created frustration. Capitalism created consumerism, and um, consequently, capitalism is itself shaken by um, over-consumerism in the form of um, pollution and a resigned new generation. The world's population is decreasing. Automation and artificial intelligence are destroying millions of jobs. Everybody wants status and everybody wants power, but that is not sustainable. Basically, up till now, the world has reached the pinnacle of uh, format to living, that is, of materialism. Everybody is reaching an existential crisis and they are looking for uh, 
and until alternate concept of living. They do not know it, but uh, they are seeking for format three kind of living. This is where I would come in and where uh, Unified Meditation fits along with my two other books. Not only that, it could be me as a person who would be playing a role, but uh, it's still unclear to me at least. So uh, in the coming decades, people will want to get out of the rat race and stop being born to consume. In my um, interaction with the youth today, I ask them what is causing them stress and suffering and demotivation. They give me uh, many reasons. And then I tell them that um, the cure for their suffering is that they must learn to tolerate and make sacrifices. They have never heard those words and uh, if they did, they didn't know the concept. And if they did know the concept, they didn't know how to uh, apply it into action. And if they also did know that, nobody dared to speak about it publicly out of fear that there'll be a backlash that would accuse them to be um, losers. Anyways, this is uh, where I saw the beginning of my um, impact in the consciousness of the world because uh, upon learning about those format three concepts they felt suddenly uh, liberated from their suffering and uh, enlightened about a new way of living they speak about it and it shows in their face and in their demeanor demeanor right away. So I believe that my role will be to herald format free living and um, put format two and format one on a back seat. They will be needed, like uh, we still have format three living in today's world and in, even in the days of uh, the war or even 20 years ago. But um, my work or my mission is to definitely make Format 3 more accessible for more and more people. Coming back uh, to this uh, book, I am glad to tell you that um, I have revealed everything and um, I have not kept uh, anything from you requiring you to um, chase me, beg me or uh, offer anything to me in order to uh, acquire my knowledge. It's all in this book. That said, there are still other layers of uh, knowledge that uh, I did not have uh, the space to cover here. And um, this uh, unified meditation will also become a trilogy. So um, by the third part, it will be a total revelation, but it will take me some time because I have to also master my own meditation in order to write more about my experiences in a way that uh, you can uh, reach enlightenment and eventually become a spiritual billionaire. I mentioned earlier that I am the reluctant chosen one. I wish my role in um, the UM movement was nothing more than to be a writer, but I'm sure that uh, this is not uh, possible. And uh, the day will come when um, I will have to come out of my shell and um, expose myself. Maybe uh, I'll need to lead an organization. Hopefully it will be just enough that uh, I become a brand, but then that would be uh, too risky to leave in uh, anybody else's hands than myself. So at this point, I'm uh, unsure. However, what I'm sure is without unified meditation, the uh, shift to format three for millions of people will never be uh, possible. If you have read this far, definitely you will have a strong role. I don't want to be recruiting at this point and um, I believe that um, your own ascended masters 
would have uh, designed a particular mission for you in this life and uh, definitely if our missions match you'll have a role in the UN movement also the prophecy showed me the great vision of a new world that uh, would be led by me and my um, writings. However, they are most likely illusions and it's fine. I think that it is embarrassment that is uh, preventing me from uh, talking about that vision openly, even in this book. All I can say, it has to do with Format 3 Living. It's a world that um, everybody is able to understand why they're actually suffering that is because of format 2 and format 1 living and how they can be happy on a long-term basis that is by following format 3 living it's a big vision imagine teaching format 3 living to vladimir putin or donald trump but um, that would be necessary otherwise this vision cannot hold water. Imagine teaching Taylor Swift from a tree living. That's a tough call. Still, these are just visions and visions are always uh, lofty. I have uh, mentioned so much my earlier two books of the Unified Theory of Motivation Living Part 1 and Part 2 that you must have got uh, tired of this um, publicity but at least uh, i've got an excuse that uh, this is my own book and uh, i have the right to do that now i want to talk about uh, my third book in the trilogy it's gonna be very short don't worry a few sentences only so far i mentioned it to you earlier that i would be calling it um, why to be good unless i find a better more suitable title but the theme is um, to uh, push my agenda of format three living more forcefully by giving evidences that uh, there is no other way, both in terms of um, economics, politics, sociology, marriage, adolescence, childhood, old age, entrepreneurship, religion, spirituality, pleasure, everything. I will be talking in depth about um, cosmic justice whereby um, nothing goes uh, unpunished or unrewarded i will try to prove that um, this um, physical world is uh, a reflection of the spiritual world and uh, thus i will establish what next we can expect in the coming uh, centuries and millenniums then of course i'll make recommendations on how we can best uh, use our lives in that time as human beings back to this book on meditation i want to tell you that um, the idea of this book came uh, only uh, two months before i wrote it before that i was planning on my uh, part three of the trilogy above and other um, books related to uh, learning which will be the next one in fact i thought that it would not be possible to write this book unless i actually uh, started um, teaching meditation but i realized that um, i just have already too much uh, knowledge to have to wait for uh, information I would get from uh, teaching meditation. Also, the motivation was that if I wrote this book, I would not have to teach meditation as a career. That would um, enable me to stay um, hidden for some more decades. Then those who really need this information would actually be able to get it without having to uh, bump into me. Besides my own r reasoning to write this book, another uh, major factor is that, um, as you can see in the diagram, the number of uh, souls that uh, are being born in um, generation X, Z, 
and now alpha have got a spiritual inclination in higher proportion than uh, material inclination so generation z and then alpha will be seeking ways to um, live a life of happiness that is very different from their parents they will seek some form of ways to connect with a higher purpose this is where this book comes in the old generation had got their own spiritual gurus and uh, they fulfilled some void but um, the extent of uh, emptiness that uh, this book and the upcoming two other books in the trilogy of unified meditation will feel is incomparable to the existing uh, gurus and then the generation Z and Alpha will not accept less because they have been so much exposed to the great videos in YouTube and information in Google. They know what is good and what is average or subpar better than um, the earlier generations. And so I am writing for those millions of reincarnated souls with spiritual desires to meditate. I don't have much hope from my own generation because um, it's very difficult to uh, accept someone you know as uh, a knowledge leader or a guru. In addition, it's not what I want, but some might also accept my teachings and follow them. However, my target is not them. It is the Generation Z and Alpha and the upcoming generations for not only centuries but millenniums. Again, as I told you, I care nothing about this life's fame and glory or for I just want to be happy and um, I want to have uh, left this legacy behind in the form of uh, writing. I don't need royalties in dollars or rupees. The blessings that uh, these millions of people will uh, give from their heart and souls is what I seek. And that is inconvertible to dollars and rupees. But uh, my concern is the other way around. If I get uh, billions of dollars in royalty, like the writer of Harry Potter, that is useless for me because I can't convert it into blessings. And uh, I don't need all that kind of money. It's useless. It's a burden. Finally, I want to take a look at the diagram below. This is what uh, Unified Meditation will do for the millions of uh, souls who will uh, read or will be um, taught this book. You have to imagine that um, imagine meditation has got 13 layers starting from level 1. So in the first birth, you are able to reach up to level 9 as uh, shown by the arrow in the first triangle. It takes you, let's say, 70 years to reach that level. And then as per the average mortality rate, you die. Then uh, you reincarnate. In the first reincarnation, it's a normal era where um, there are dozens, hundreds or thousands of gurus that teach traditional kind of meditation. So what happens is in the first 50 years, you are able to reach the same level 9 where you had left in the past life and uh, again keeping the uh, mortality rate to 70 in this life in the remaining 20 years you will be able to reach level 11 then again you die now uh, you are born in the era of unified meditation where it is uh, common knowledge or popular knowledge and you can practice it right away what happens as shown by the red arrow is that um, you reach level 9 within the first 20 years of your life then in the next 50 years of your life because of unified meditation you'll be able to reach the highest level of 13 before you die 
at the average mortality rate of 70. In this way, this book is all about um, giving you the possibility to eternal life, eternal bliss, and infinite knowledge, what I've been calling Sat Chit Ananda of the highest order.